What's so unique about mirtazapine? We're going to have to go into a little bit of the um, pharmacology of mirtazapine. Mirtazapine, otherwise known as Remeron, is used for depression. What's so interesting about mirtazapine? Well, let's talk about what it does. It is called a NASA, N-A-S-S-A, -S -S -A, a noradrenergic serotonin specific antagonist. What does it do? Noradrenergic. What does that mean? It blocks the alpha-2 receptor. It's a noradrenergic receptor. It blocks both the homo and the hetero presynaptic autoreceptors for both serotonin and norepinephrine. The homo receptor, autoreceptor is for uh, norepinephrine. The hetero receptor is for serotonin. The norepinephrine receptor is in the midbrain, the locus ceruleus, and it's, uh, there's an alpha-2 blockade there, and the dorsal raphae is a serotonergic cell bodies where it blocks the alpha-2 receptors there. And what does that do? When you block the alpha-2 receptor, that is blocking the inhibition. So that receptor, when it's blocked, it doesn't produce norepinephrine, serotonin. But when you block the blockade, and that's what we're doing, we're blocking the antagonism, blocking the blocker. Let's do an example. Here's the receptor wanting to work, and here's the blocker. It doesn't get through. When we block the blocker, it gets through. That's the basic uh, pharmacokinetics of what's going on. And what that does, it increases serotonin and it increases norepinephrine. And that is considered to be the noradrenergic antidepressant quality. So when you block the alpha-2 receptor, and that receptor is an inhibitory receptor. So when we block the inhibition, we increase norepinephrine and serotonin, and that has antidepressant qualities. Then it does something else there's a histamine receptor that it blocks. The H1 receptor, and it blocks that receptor, and that makes mirtazapine, otherwise known as Remeron, make people gain weight. It also helps decrease anxiety, and it helps people sleep. So now we have the first component would be the alpha-2 blockade, both at the homo and hetero receptor, blocking the inhibition. That increases norepinephrine and serotonin, now we have the H1 receptor, which is blocked, which is basically a histamine receptor in the lateral hypothalamus, increasing appetite, increasing weight, decreasing anxiety, and makes you sleep. That sounds pretty good, except for the weight gain. Now, selective serotonin antagonism. Which serotonin receptors does it block? The 5-HT2A and 2C. The 5-HT2A is responsible for when it is blocked, that contributes to decreased anxiety, decreased depression. It also makes you sleep better. 5-HT2C receptor, which is by blocking, you're blocking the inhibition and increasing serotonin in some ways. So the 5-HT2 receptor is blocked that makes you tired. It also treats anxiety and depression. When stimulated, remember there's a drug, fentiramine, stimulates the 5-HT2C receptor and keeps you awake and makes you lose weight. So when we block that 5-HT2C receptor, makes you gain weight, decreases anxiety, decreases depression, and makes you sleep. So we looked at this profile. We have the histamine, blockade, increasing appetite, decreasing anxiety, decreasing, uh, helping you sleep, decreasing insomnia. That's great. We saw the noradrenergic mechanism of action through the alpha-2 receptor blockade, blocking the inhibition, thus increasing uh, serotonergic and noradrenergic release, serotonin and norepinephrine release. At the, We blocked the inhibition, thus increasing norepinephrine and serotonin. That's the mechanism of action of the antidepressant. And the secondary antidepressant reaction, the 5-H2A and 2C, and we find that that helps anxiety, depression, but also with sleep. 
There's another drug which I use when I want to help people sleep that blocks the 5-HT2A and 2C receptor without causing weight gain and drowsiness the next day. Uh, that's called trazodone. And it doesn't seem to put on weight. So we, we see what mirtazapine does, brand name Remeron, and we see its receptor profile by blocking these serotonergic receptors and by blocking the histamine receptors and blocking the uh, alpha-2 receptors. Gives us some understanding of the side effects of this drug, which are mostly drowsiness the next day, increased appetite, weight gain. It also has some other minor side effects of maybe vivid dreams. It may rarely cause a granulocytosis, which is you don't have white cells, so you get a lot of infections and you break out in rashes in your mouth. Otherwise, it has no drug interactions. It lasts maybe 20, 40 hours in terms of its half-life. So it can be given once a day, it's usually given at night. There's something called California rocket fuel. That's when you mix this drug because of its specific receptor profile with fenlafaxine that blocks the reuptake pump of both norepinephrine and serotonin. And that's considered to be a very, a very powerful antidepressant, that combination. Alone, mirtazapine, otherwise known as Remeron, is really not that good of an antidepressant. I use it in people who maybe can't sleep, maybe they have poor appetite, they're depressed. I usually have to use it as an add-on drug. I give it in doses of 15 to 45 milligrams. There are better ways to put people to sleep affecting these serotonergic receptors called trazodone, so I mentioned that. There's also my sleep video, then there's also the adrenergic video, the flight or flight video, the alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two uh, video that you might wanna watch. But that was a little bit what I wanted to talk about, about uh, mirtazapine, so that people would have an understanding of how that drug works. Go look at my video on uh, Erpiprazole, what makes Abilify so special. And I think if you start watching these videos, you will have a general understanding of how the serotonergic, adrenergic, histaminergic systems work and how they bring about therapeutic change. Here's an interesting thing. You can stimulate the alpha-2 receptor. Here we're blocking it and getting an antidepressant effect, but if you stimulate it, you can lower blood pressure, drugs such as clonidine and guanfacine, but you get a attention deficit disorder treat, treatment. Clonidine and guanfacine both stimulate that alpha-2 receptor. So something is going on that has a calming effect when that receptor is stimulated and when it's blocked, as an, functions as an antidepressant. That's interesting. And that tells you that everything is not completely understood. So it, one receptor does not tell you the whole picture. We have to know what they're all doing in synchrony. And the constellation of everything happening at once brings about therapeutic change. And that's the gist of what's going on. I appreciate likes, subscribes. Um, thank you very much.